Hajax is sharpening his claws on the mat. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. Right now, it is 12.53 p.m. I'm just about to leave for the afternoon and there's a live stream going on. And I want Simba to go lay under the tree, but instead he's just been wandering around. There he goes. He's kind of facing in the wrong direction though. Simba, turn around and face the camera. Oh, the little Santa's jiggling. The cats like that jiggling Santa. I put the feather boa around the edge of the tree skirt just to see if the cats would like it. There's a scratch and roll. There's a round bed in the back that Stella likes to lay in. And then there's the big Santa hat. And here we have Stella and Boo. And they're hanging out here instead of under the tree. But hopefully Stella will go lay under the tree and I don't know what Boo's going to do. It is... It is about 6.35 p.m. right now. I just got home. The minute I got out of my car, Hydrox started meowing at me. And I just went inside and I put a handful of crunchies in the feeder because he seems to like eating those. So hopefully he'll go and get those. I have to unload the car. Okay, Hydrox, go eat. I just went downstairs to get more crunchies. Hijax is by the back door. Boo and Simba are looking at him. I just gave him some crunchies on a platter because he didn't want to eat the crunchies that were in the feeder and he doesn't want to eat the crunchies on the platter either. Look at this. He's scratching on that doormat and he wants to sit there by the cats. I have to go finish unloading. Like the whole back of the car is wide open. Look at this. What does he want to do? He wants to go inside the house? He's like so not anywhere near going inside the house. He doesn't let me near him. Okay, so it seems that today Hydrox really wanted wet food from a can because he was meowing and meowing and meowing. So I gave him half of a can of the Trader Joe's, I think it's the uh, turkey and giblets or the chicken and rice. And I put half of a can in there and he was kind of close to me. So I held the spoon out to him to see what he would do. And he came within a foot of the spoon and he smelled the spoon and he smelled the food. So then he went right over to the feeder to eat something. So there's, right now there's dry food in the feeder. It's like a handful. There's dry food on a platter on the patio and there's half a can of wet food outside. So Hydrox has plenty of food. It is 9.45 a.m. and the cats all just got their breakfast and they're each getting breakfast on their own little paper plate. Boo's eating on the stairs, the other cats are eating on the floor and even though they have their own plate it looks like they're kind of sharing. It's 1.12 p.m. right now. I just got home from running some errands and this is what I just found. So Splash is laying on the floor in Boo's room. Boo is laying on the bed in Boo's room. And Simba has been laying in the sun in Boo's room. So Simba has been laying by the window. Hey Simba. Boo has been laying on the bed. And Splash was laying on the rug right here. But he just went under the day bed. Boo's having like a party in his room. The cats love laying in the sun.
We went back to bed. And here's Stella. Stella's in the cat bed near the Christmas tree. Stella loves laying in the cat bed near the Christmas tree. Last night I put another cat bed by the Christmas tree and Splash was laying in that one. So right now there's a cat bed there. There's this Santa pouch thing here. There's the wobbly Santa here, which they have been leaving alone. Um, so I'm going to move it. They don't really like it that much. I thought they would like it because when you touch it, it wobbles. We have a scratch and roll here. And then we have a cat bed. So the live stream has been set up near the Christmas tree lately. Um, if it was easier to set it up in Boo's room, I probably would right now since the cats are in there. But um, it would disrupt a whole lot of things for me to unplug everything and plug everything back in and just get it all set up. So uh, right now, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to remove the scratch and roll. I'm going to remove the Santa hat and the Santa. And then I'll put like one of the plastic beds there. So there will be the round bed Stella's in. There will be the other soft rectangle bed, which is on the right. And there'll be a plastic bed in front. And we'll see. We'll see how the cats like that. It is 8 p.m. I just got home. And Hydrox was in the heated shelter. And when he heard me on the patio, he came out of the shelter and he started meowing at me. So I just came inside. And I'm about to put some food together for him. Stella just said hello to him at the door. And now Simba's at the door. I'm thinking of maybe opening it just a little bit to let them smell each other. I mean, they probably can smell each other because, you know, this door isn't exactly airtight. I put one of those draft dodgers um, below the door last night because I noticed how um, cold it was getting. So let's see what happens. Hydrox is sharpening his claws on the mat. I'm sorry if you can't see anything because of um, reflections. To me it looked like Hydrox was like laying down and rubbing himself on that mat. Okay Hydrox. Now Simba and Hydrox used to get along when Simba was a little kitten living outside. I don't know if they remember each other or not, but don't forget, Simba likes everyone. Simba's a friendly cat, and remember what Boo did when Boo first came inside. Boo jumped on Simba a few times and attacked him. Okay, I'm coming outside, Hydrox. I'll give you some food, okay? I just gave Hydrox half a can of the Trader Joe's chicken, turkey, and rice dinner. I mixed it up with some water, uh, some warm water, and I put it in the kitty cafe. And he smelled it, and then he walked away. So I'm going to go grab a handful of crunchies and put that out and see if he eats it. It is 8.15 p.m. right now. We just ended today's live stream, and I want to give a shout out for some super chats. Thank you, Tracy Yoshida, for the $5 super chat. She says, Merry Christmas. Thank you to Billy Laptop for the $20 super chat. He says, Merry Christmas to the Lucky Ferrells. Merry Christmas to you too, Billy. Thank you to Debbie Wagner for the $5.49 super chat. Uh, she says, Merry Christmas. Very Merry Christmas to you too, Debbie. And thank you to Kim H. for the $10 super chat. She says, this is for you, Splashy. Well, Splashy is very appreciative of that. Thank you so much, Kim. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's live stream. As a holiday treat, the cats are going to try this Blue Wilderness Denali dinner. This is canned cat food, it says, with wild salmon, venison, and halibut. I don't know if they've had this before. I don't think they have. And this is a blue wilderness food. And the ingredients are turkey, turkey broth, salmon, turkey liver, and venison. Those are the first five ingredients. Um, 
which is good. Those are clean ingredients. Then we have halibut, potatoes, flaxseed, natural flavor, guar gum, potassium chloride, taurine, choline chloride, and cranberries, carrageenan, cassia gum, uh, then it goes into vitamins and minerals. This is a natural and healthy food for cats and since there's some venison in here I thought that they might like it. So I'm pretty much all out of raw food for the cats. I have like two scoops of homemade raw food defrosted for them and that's it. I have to make more today. So they're each going to get like half a scoop of the homemade raw. They're each going to get a quarter of this can. Then I'm also going to give them some of the freeze dried bites and some crunchies and then that's their dinner. This is what their plates look like. The canned food is on the bottom, the raw food is on the top, there's some freeze-dried bites in the middle, and there's a bench of field treat on each side. And if they eat this, then we can figure out what else to give them. So Stella's eating some food right away. There's no problem, she eats right away. And Boo is eating his food because Boo usually likes canned food. And Simba's protesting. Right now it's 8.36 p.m. And I'm having a hard time focusing through the door, but there's a cat eating out of the automatic feeder. It's either Hydrox or Ditto, I'm not sure who. So it looks like Ditto. It looks like Ditto has been eating in the cat feeder. Now Ditto's eating the food that I put out for Hydrox, which is fine. I'd rather a cat eat it than possums or raccoons. Right now it's about 30 minutes later. Let's see what the cats did to their meals. So Boo ate his canned food. He left the raw food and he left the freeze-dried bites. Now Boo is eating the canned food off of Simba's plate. I don't know if Simba ate anything on this plate because he ran upstairs pretty fast. I think one of the other cats uh, probably ate the raw food on the plate and the freeze-dried bites are still there along with the bench and field treat. And on this plate, someone ate the raw food and some of the canned food and they left the freeze-dried bites and the bench of field treat. And on this plate, someone ate the raw food, they left the freeze-dried bites and they ate, I would say, most of the canned food or like three quarters of it. So for some reason, they are not liking those freeze-dried bites anymore. Right now it's about 9.53 p.m. and I am just about to make another batch of homemade raw cat food for the cats. And in this measuring cup, I have uh, the dry supplements that I'm using in this batch. So basically every time that I make it, I keep adding more supplements to it um, because I'm gradually getting the cats used to eating it and I don't want to add too much at once and then they're going to reject it. So. Um, I know that they liked it last time, so I'm pretty much adding the same thing, but this time I'm adding a few more ingredients. So this time what I have is two capsules of additional taurine, so that's about 2,000 milligrams of taurine. Now I do have chicken hearts in this, which have naturally occurring taurine, so uh, this is just to add some as a supplement. Now most of the articles that I've been reading about raw food recipes say to supplement with taurine and they say it's not harmful because it's water soluble, but anytime that you take a water soluble vitamin, the kidneys have to filter out whatever is not used by the body, so over time it does put a load on them. So you don't want to go crazy with mega dosing on vitamins. Last time I made food for the cats, I had some fresh oat grass, which was absolutely amazing. I love the smell of it, and every time I fed the cats uh, that food, um, it just smelled like fresh oat grass, and it was amazing. I don't have any right now, so I'm using this amazing grass, amazing trio, barley grass, wheat grass, and alfalfa. Um, so these are, it's basically like adding some dried cat grass to the recipe. I'm adding a half a teaspoon of this. Quite a few of the recipes that I found online say to add like a low sodium salt to the recipe to give the cats iodine, but all the natural food that you buy uses kelp. Kelp is naturally rich in iodine as well as a whole bunch of other minerals 
And the recipes that I found online say to use a quarter teaspoon of that. So that's what I'm using. And then last time I also used a few pumps of this pure wild Alaskan salmon oil. And that is what I am going to do again this time. I guess the equivalent would be maybe like four teaspoons of this. I have my latex gloves all ready for mixing. And the other thing I'm going to try this time is adding some vegetable matter to this. So I have one carrot here. I want to see what happens if I put this through the meat grinder. This will be the first thing that I put through the meat grinder. I'm really curious to see what it does to this. Like, will it shred it? Um, I've come across quite a few recipes that say, you know, you could put a certain amount of raw veggies in the food. So I'm just going to start, um, really slow with maybe half the carrot, maybe the whole carrot. I don't know. We'll see how it comes out through the meat grinder. So we have two pounds of boneless chicken breast and we have another pound of boneless chicken breast. So that's three pounds of boneless chicken breast. I have one and a quarter pounds of chicken thighs with bone. And then I have three quarters of a pound of boneless chicken thighs. So altogether about two pounds of chicken thighs and only half of them have bones. And then I have two one pound packages of chicken wings. These have bones. And then we have about six ounces each of chicken liver and chicken hearts. So basically I'm trying to go for a ratio that's about 5% liver, 5% heart, 10% bones, and then 80% muscle meat, skin, tendons, like all the other stuff. Another thing that I wanted to mention with regards to the chicken, um, the store that I purchased this in today, they don't list the pack on date, like the day that the chicken was uh, packed. So I went by the sell by date and I tried to find the sell by dates that were the farthest from today. So today's the 11th and I tried to find sell by dates that were the 15th, which would be four days away because I figured those were the freshest. For some of these things, I could not find that. They only had uh, the 14th, which is three days away. So I went with those and I'm hoping when I open these chicken parts that nothing has like a funky odor. This is all of the chicken. All the packages have been opened. Every piece has been rinsed off. Everything smells good. Nothing has an odor at all. So hopefully this should all go well. This is all of the meat that was just ground up. This machine handled everything beautifully. The carrot went through no problem at all. Um, first thing I put through was a wing, then I put the carrot through and it handled it perfectly. It just chopped it up into very, very small pieces. Then I put the organ meats through and then I followed that with more wings. And then I did the thighs, then I finished it off with the breast meat. So everything is here kind of in layers. What I'm going to do now is start mixing everything together. I'm going to add the supplements to it. And then from there, uh, I'm going to portion it out and put it in the freezer. Now, I do want to say that while I was using this grinder, now the grinder is not very loud. Um, obviously, it is fairly loud because it's a grinder, but I don't think it's very loud because I have blenders that are like super loud in the food processor, which is really loud. So to me, it's not too loud. But while I was grinding all this meat, Boo sat on the floor about four feet away and watched the whole thing. He sat right here and he just like watched intently. I don't know if he smells the chicken or what, but uh, he was very interested. I started mixing up the meat and I probably mixed it up about halfway and then I just added all the dry ingredients and then I added like four teaspoons of the salmon oil. And I'm going to continue mixing it. And Boo is so curious about everything that I'm doing. Like he won't take his eyes off of what's going on. Boo, I'm making food. I'm making you food, okay? After I put the fish oil and the supplements in, then Stella showed up. Now she's interested in it also. I just gave Boo a little bit of the raw food to try. It's still very cold because all the meat was in the refrigerator. And I put some baby food around it. Right now he's licking up the baby food, but I'm curious to see if he'll eat the new raw food. 
Again, the only difference with this raw food is it does not have the fresh cat grass, it is the powdered cat grass. But I did put powdered cat grass in um, a previous raw food experiment. And the other difference is there's taurine in here, additional taurine supplement. Uh, there's carrot, there's one carrot, and kelp. So those are the differences. There's fish oil in the last one, there's fish oil in this one. And, um, the last one I put turmeric in, I did not put turmeric in this one. Well, he seems to be eating it, he seems to like it. Now after I mixed all of the carrots in, I noticed that the carrot pieces are basically the same size pieces as the bone is, but obviously they're not going to be as hard as bone is for the cats. And I'm actually kind of glad that I added the carrot in because that's how I was able to see how well I was mixing everything together because you can kind of see how well the carrot was distributed throughout the meat mixture. I wanted to add some peas also, but I didn't have any frozen peas. I could always get fresh ones next time. Some of the recipes also added zucchini. Um, I did have zucchini, um, but the cats have never had that, so I didn't add that, but next time I could add that also. Next time I would just add like one additional vegetable and maybe another supplement or two. But yeah, looks like Boo likes it. I already put some in the refrigerator for their breakfast tomorrow. Everything else is on um, sheet pans in the freezer. Um, so all the single portions could freeze up and get hard. And then tomorrow I'll put them in bags and they'll be in freezer bags. So depending on how many of the meatballs the cats eat per meal will depend on how long this food lasts. So if they each eat like one and a half meatballs per meal, it would probably last about a week because there's four cats. Um, if they only eat one meatball per meal, it'll last longer than that. And it will depend on, you know, um, how much of the other commercial raw food I have. I've been splitting the portions with that. Um, if I give them sardines once a week, stuff like that. But look, Boo just stretched and he ate all his food. He's a very happy boy now. He's walking away. Thank you for watching this Lucky Farrells video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos. And please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.